China's problem kids having it rough away from home. I'm exhausted. Whoa. I'm exhausted. My legs are killing me. Early dawn on the outskirts of Wuxi, a small town to the east of Shanghai. A distinctive army is woken up by their morning call. This is China's first brat can, an unusual mobile school, designed to reform spoiled kids, school dropouts and troublemakers. Over 120 children, aged from 8 to 15, are gathered here from all over China for military-style discipline and physical training. In a fast-changing society which has no room for failure, they are left behind in the competitive race. Breakfast is simple. So is the method used to help them transform. A long march, covering in this stretch a total of 800 kilometers. For weeks now, the kids have been walking across China from one town to the next. But the hardest journey is yet to come. <laughs> A tough battle is coming up for you all in the next 48 hours. You are expected to do intensive marching as hard and fast as you can. Do you have the strength to make it? Good. Now forward. Commanding this unusual troop is the 26-year-old supervisor Guan Zhixiang. Our recruits here are what everyone calls bad students because they've got bad grades and bad manners. But we think they're very bright. They are strong characters. Their problem is a lack of self-control and willpower. They are easily defeated. All the children on the march resent school, but each has a different story. 14-year-old Lin Zhenni comes from southwest China and has a turbulent relationship with her parents. My mom and dad got divorced when I was five. I was very moody, even at school. There was so much bottled up inside me that I couldn't focus on my studies. Li Zhanyu, also 14, dropped out of school because of his computer game addiction and spent all his time in illegal internet cafes. For 15 days I played non-stop. When I felt hungry, there was food in there to buy. Noodles, drinks and cigarettes. There were also beds there. I'd have a snooze and when I woke, I carried on playing. Once I missed an entire math lesson because I was depressed, since then, it got worse, and I gave up. I was oblivious to all my parents' tears and persuasion. Even if the world exploded, I want to die in front of my computer. Li Zhanyu claims that he's related to China's last emperor and revels in his new nickname, the Prince. At school, I didn't get on with others. I was self-centered and a bit of a bully. If anyone touched my things, I'd kick them. I'm rich. I have raw blood. Who can beat that? But his mate, 13-year-old Wang Zewei, is not overawed. <laughs> 
The prince, huh. Everyone here who knows him thinks he's incredibly pretentious. Even now, he hasn't changed his habits. And he's always full of bullshit. No one takes him seriously. But Wang Zewei has his own secret. No, not really. It's just a pretense. If you don't give them the impression that you're the tough guy, then you don't really stand a chance. Because of that, they'll bully you. Wang Zewei had taken constant beatings from his dad for playing truant. I remember there was this one time when my father beat me with a stick. It hit me so hard, my backside was black and blue. It hurt so much that I never quite forgot that pain. I thought to myself, if you carry on beating me, I will kill you. My teacher said to me, there are so many divorced families, don't think you're any different. I was so furious when I got home that I screamed, go and have your divorce. And I smashed everything up. While parents and school teachers have failed to handle these difficult children, supervisors at the brat camp have a better idea. These kids have a lot of anger and frustration inside them. We need to find an outlet for them, take away that negative energy. Walking is the most basic training. It wears them down and stretches them to the limit. When they are tired, they will start to reflect. While the young marchers carefully negotiate traffic on China's motorway, 250 kilometers away in a small town of Huai'an, 60 or so fellow students are undergoing training of a different kind at the school headquarters. This is the Xu Xiangyang School. Named after its founder, it is a pioneering private education institution for China's bad students. Bucking the trend of elitism is the founder and headmaster, Mr. Xu, a 46-year-old war veteran with a business acumen. Everyone believes that if you get into a university, you are a good student. If you can't, you are bad. I do the opposite and I deal with the bad students. I don't believe anyone is bad. Mr. Xu's experiment began with his own son, who had a hard time at school for being a poor achiever. Now his son is a successful graphic designer in South Korea. My son was asked to stand outside the classroom in the biting wind and the boy had a running nose. I said, where is your school bag? He said, my teacher threw it away. I was furious. How can you judge a child by his grade only and label him as a bad apple? Once he takes on such a label, he slips further. Bad grades leads to bad behavior and no one cares about him anymore. Convinced that his son was wasting time at school, Mr. Xu started to teach him at home a bold decision in a culture which reveres formal education and relies much on state provision. But the Chinese Education Authority considers one in six of its 300 million school children as bad students. So a market opportunity presented itself. An old Chinese saying tells us that teaching should be flexible to suit individual needs. These kids don't fit well within normal school schemes. Mr. Xu's curriculum is simple, the long march. And for restless children, the devil makes work for idle hands. Everyone talks about being elite, going upwards, like hydrogen flying to the North Pole. What about the basics? You have to be a man first, a healthy, balanced man who knows how to communicate your own thoughts. As a soldier who fought in the Sino-Vietnam War, Mr. Xu was brought up by his revolutionary mother. 
His family tradition has left him with little doubt about putting his school under a military regime. <laughs> The military management is the most effective form of management. China's best-selling book in 2006 was Learning from the Liberation Army. There are lessons in it for businesses, schools and social institutions. And Mr. Xu's school seems precisely a hybrid of the three. At more than $3,000 a year, the fee here is considered expensive in China. But as the school's reputation grows, more and more parents are sending their problem children here, hoping for a cure. Back at the training camp, a reluctant new recruit has just arrived by train with his father. Dreaming of becoming a pop singer, the boy is determined to leave school to learn guitar. His disappointed father gives him the ultimatum. It's either back to school or join the march. Chengong的明星们呢，都是付出代价的，而不是说你的富裕表面。他们付出代价，但是我付出这种比较虚伪的啊，头发像了，身穿的衣服像了，这都是你的。我愿意。行啊，你应该确实应该接受锻炼了。
In a story familiar all over China, she boarded at her teacher's house for three years, while her divorced mother was swept along by China's economic boom. On New Year's Eve, I felt really homesick. I cried and cried. In the end, my teacher had to contact my mom. When mom came, I cried even more and wouldn't let her go. Then mom said, good girl, I need to make more money before I can take you home. At the camp, after an escape attempt, Ling Jenny has finally found a friend. The supervisor found out and she started talking to me. I never had the same kind of communication with my parents. I cried for the first time since I got here. When I spilled everything I'd bottled up for so long, I felt so much better. But there are deeper wounds within these children which can't be cured easily. A sense of failure in the school race and often the feeling of being abandoned by their own teachers. He said, you can sleep in class as much as you like. You go out to play when you wake. As long as you don't disturb the others. I failed my maths exam. He said in front of everyone, what's your head for? Is it for eating pig food? <sighs> what do I hate the most? I hate the beatings from my parents. I hate the kids bullying me at school. I hate the teachers nagging and the constant sarcastic comments. I also hate the endless amounts of homework. At home, some anxious parents are following the progress of the march on the school's website. But many worry that once the march is over, these children still have to face an extremely demanding school timetable. They get to school by 6.30 and come home for lunch at 11.30, then back to school from 1 p.m. until 9.30 p.m. with just the one hour dinner break. Chu Zhongfang's family owns a supermarket chain. Her only son dropped out of school because he could no longer cope. With this one child generation, the only thing for them to do is study, study. If he studies well, he is God. He's the emperor. The whole family move around him. Once an anxious father himself, Headmaster Xu has plenty of empathy with the parents. But as a self-made educator, he thinks that the parents are also part of their children's problem. All their hope and drive come from the only child. That's not going to work. The parents' generation was never able to fulfill the dreams. Now they are forcing it upon their children. In a nearby village, He Xiaomei, a farmer and motorbike taxi driver, is desperately worried whether the long march will wean her son off his computer game addiction. Like many other parents, she can do little to stop the growing attraction of illegal internet cafes across the country as more and more distressed school children seek escape in the thrills of cyberspace. We took him to see a doctor to see if there's anything wrong with his head. We were told that he had minor depression. The hospital charged $25 a day. So frightfully expensive. We couldn't afford it and the treatment didn't work anyway. When they heard about the Xu Xiangyang school, they saw it as their last hope. We borrowed money from relatives and got a loan to send him there. It's worth it for our son. But Mr. Xu does not pretend that his school is the real answer to a much wider social problem. 
Whichever way you see my school, a hospital for the sick kids, or a supplementary institute, in the ideal world, it shouldn't exist. But as long as the education system remains unchanged, and teachers unchanged, my business will keep growing. Having pioneered a new path for China's problem children, Mr. Xu is, however, pessimistic about their long-term future. In schools today, one class has 50 to 60 kids. Only the first 15 have any real chance. Anyone who comes after 25 is a victim. On the road, the children's long march goes on, night and day. I'm very sleepy. I can't feel my legs anymore. And I've got blisters on my feet. When I was at home, I never cared about my mom's feelings. Now I'm away from home. I feel lost. I realize how selfish I am of the coming here. And I feel guilty towards my mom. I want to show her with action that I'm great. The long march carries with it moments of consternation and confusion, but also reflection and revelation. When they are tired, good humor keeps them going. My mum tricked me. On my way here, I thought this must be a very posh school. We'll be riding in Cadillac. We'll eat beefsteaks every day. When I got here, I saw the military trucks. It was all too late. Six weeks later, the children finally reached their headquarters. They walked a total of 800 kilometers and crossed 10 cities during their long march. <laughs>